guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. It is officially summertime, finally, thank the freaking Lord for everything except for our hair, I guess. Because summertime is arguably the most damaging time of year for our hair. We're frequently exposing it to all of these different factors that contribute to damage, like UV rays, chlorine from swimming pools, increased humidity, salt water from the ocean, even pollutants in the air. I'm feeling a little bit stressed just thinking about it. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking all of that down and sharing my top summer hair care tips so that you can have the healthiest hair possible despite all of this increased damage exposure. We will jump into that in a second, but before we do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know something that you are excited to do this summer. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm, so I appreciate you so much. And if you need anything from me, check out my description box below. I have Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, timestamps, discount codes, links to any products that I mentioned in today's video, and links to my favorite beauty products of all time. All right, let's talk summer hair care. All right, let's start off by talking about damage that can occur from just stepping outside and exposing our hair to both the sun and the air. These are obviously factors that can impact our hair year round, but because we tend to be outside a lot more and for longer periods of time in the summer, they become much bigger concerns than in the colder weather months. It turns out it's actually not just UV rays that damage our hair, it's UV light and visible light that cause damage. There are a lot of chemical changes that take place when our hair is exposed to sunlight. And for the sake of keeping this video a watchable amount of time, I won't walk through every single one of those chemical changes, but I will quickly explain five different things that I think really help to illustrate how sunlight does damage our hair. First is that light radiation has been shown to cause hair protein degradation, which in turn weakens the hair. Similarly, sunlight exposure has been shown to decrease the lipid content in the surface layers of the hair. Sunlight also impacts how our hair behaves when it's wet because both visible and UV light have been shown to decrease the wet tensile properties of our hair and photochemically damaged hair has been shown to experience increased swelling one wet. And the fifth and final thing I wanted to bring up for this video that I think really sums all of this up well is that the chemical changes that occur in our hair when it is exposed to sunlight will actually chemically change virgin positively charged hydrophobic hair into a more negatively charged hydrophilic surface. And both of those things indicate hair damage. Something that I found to be really interesting, but also not surprising in the research that I did for this video is that the color of your hair actually does have a direct impact on how vulnerable your hair is to experiencing damage from sunlight exposure. The reason is because the melanin in our hair actually has a photoprotective effect and dark hair has a higher melanin content. So dark hair is going to be the least vulnerable to damage from sunlight sunlight exposure, light hair is going to be a lot more vulnerable because light hair has less melanin. And something that was kind of surprising to me is that it's not just whether or not your hair is light or dark naturally, because even dark hair dyes have been shown to have a photoprotective effect that help to decrease cortical damage. So even if you dye your hair dark, you're going to have that photo protection that naturally dark hair has as well. I could not find research talking about the difference between those two things and if one has a lot more than the other, but hair dyes can protect your hair from the sun, which is pretty awesome. And then shocker, bleached hair on the opposite end of things is going to be the most vulnerable out of any hair colors, processed, artificial, natural, to sunlight damage. Plus, of course, while we're talking about UV damage, we can't forget to bring up the health of our scalp in that discussion. Our scalp can get a sunburn in the same way that our face can get a sunburn, the rest of our body can get a sunburn. So it's super important to make sure that we are protecting our scalp from UV rays in the same way that we are protecting our face and the rest of our body. And to top it all off, as if that was not enough, on top of the visible light and UV light damage, our hair can also be damaged by pollution and free radicals in the air or in the environment. So there's a lot going on outside that can really cause damage to our hair. So let's talk about some ways that we can prevent that damage from happening and protect our hair from everything that's trying to attack us outdoors. My first tip is to physically cover your head whenever you're able to. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that, but one of the easier, more common methods is to just wear a hat. Wearing a hat is a really good way to not only protect your scalp, but also cover up some of your hair as well or a lot of your hair, depending on the type of hat that you're wearing, because there are those huge floppy hats that cover almost all of your hair, especially if you had it 
pulled up in a bun, but I know that those are not always the most practical. So you could wear a baseball cap, a smaller floppy hat, a bucket hat, whatever works for you. But I think wearing a hat is always a great practice, especially if you're just like going on a walk, something like that, where it wouldn't bother you to wear one. Cause I know that there are always going to be those situations where you don't want to wear a hat. doesn't really fit the vibe, but going on a walk is a great time to always just put a hat on and protect your scalp and hair. The other way that you can physically cover your head is by sitting under an umbrella whenever you're at the beach or pool. That's something that I have been recommending for years because you guys know I am not a sunbather anymore, even though I used to be. I love being outside. I love the feeling of warm weather, but I don't want the sun directly beating down on me for hours and hours. Like I'm not going to be laying out and tanning in the sun um, over my dead body. So you can always find me under the nearest umbrella. If there is an umbrella in sight, I definitely recommend doing that whenever you're able to. But again, I know that that's not always going to be an option or is not always practical because maybe you are, you know, in the swimming pool or you're doing something active where you can't be sitting in the protection of the umbrella with hundred percent zinc on your face and a huge floppy hat that covers your entire body. I get it, it's not always going to be an option. So in those situations where you can't sit under an umbrella and you can't wear a hat, I would always recommend applying sunscreen to any areas of your scalp that are directly exposed to the sun, like for example, a visible part like this. I know applying sunscreen to the scalp is not ideal because sunscreens tend to be sticky and leave a little bit of a greasy residue and then can make your hair look greasy in turn, but I have a little hack that I think helps with that. I would go for a spray sunscreen for the scalp. I think that this is going to be the easiest, least messy way to ensure that you're getting adequate even coverage so that you can actually get that labeled SPF. There are other methods like, for example, a sunscreen powder, but the issue with this is that you would have to use a lot of product to actually get to the labeled SPF. And then on top of that, you would need that even consistent film to make sure that you're getting the labeled SPF that also stays in place to make sure that you're getting the labeled SPF. So it's just really difficult to do that, especially on your scalp. So I would not use a sunscreen powder by itself. Instead, what I would do is use a spray sunscreen first and then use the sunscreen powder after on top of it to help to absorb any of that greasy residue, kind of like a little dry shampoo but with sunscreen in it. So this sunscreen is the Bear Republic Clear Screen Invisible Finish Sunscreen Spray. It is an SPF 100, we love that. And it's water resistant for 80 minutes. I would definitely recommend looking for a water resistant sunscreen for the summertime, especially because if you're gonna be swimming in a pool, you wanna make sure that this is keeping you protected despite all of that water activity. So this is nice because it definitely is lighter weight than some other spray sunscreens I've tried. It's not going to leave a lotion-y look on the scalp. Like, you know how sometimes spray sunscreens will kind of ball up and look like little white dots of lotion and then you rub it in a little bit? This does not do that at all. It, my stomach just growled. <laughs> it is completely clear or invisible, like they say. So that's why I recommend this one. And I mean, it definitely does still leave that greasy residue, but I think with a sunscreen powder like this, it really helps to mask the appearance of that. And you don't have to spray this all over the top of your head, like just get right close to there to spray right on the visible part so that you don't have such a mess. And then any powder sunscreen works. You could go for one that has a little bit of a tint if you have darker hair, or if you even have like dark blonde hair and you wanna lighten your roots, or you could do something like this, which is just translucent. This is the Color Science Total Protection Sheer Matte 30 Sunscreen Brush. I think it's a great option. So you will just take this and apply it directly on top of that area on the visible part. And then you can also bring it over to any areas of your hair that the sunscreen landed on as well to mask up that greasy look. I know the Paula's Choice Powder Sunscreen has a little bit of a tint to it, so I will list that below. I think that that's a really good option if you want one that is kind of tinted. So our scalp is protected, good to go. Now we want to focus on the lengths and ends of our hair. So for that, I would recommend taking the sunscreen spray and spraying it all <laughs> I'm kidding, that's so disgusting. No, that's not what I'm gonna recommend. Thankfully, there's tons of products out there that do offer UV protection as a benefit. So make sure to look for a leave-in conditioner that has UV protection listed on the label and make sure that it actually says that versus just protection from the environment or protection from environmental aggressors because those are different things. Like I was saying before, our hair can be damaged from pollution in the air, free radicals in the environment. So those kinds of claims really target those 
things. Ideally, you would have both, but you definitely want to make sure it actually says UV protection on it. Some of my favorite products that do have UV protection include the Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil Heat and UV Protective Primer. I'm obsessed with this. You guys have heard me talk about it so many times. It's just such a good all around leave in conditioner. Ideally, I like to get UV protection from a leave in conditioning spray because then I can make sure that I am spraying that product on as much of my hair as possible because sprays tend to be lighter weight. It's easier for me to do that without getting a lot of buildup, especially if I do want to bring that product, which I do up towards my roots versus something like a lotion or cream, but I do have a cream option as well. The other option for a spray that I have is definitely a little bit of a splurge, but I just, I feel like I've never really been let down by an Oribe product. They just have some really good stuff. So if you're interested in splurging, then this is their Invisible Defense Universal Protection Spray another that has UV protection as a listed benefit. And then if you want a lotion or cream, this is a really good option from Alterna. It's their Caviar Anti-Aging Replenishing Moisture CC Cream. And if you look on the back of this label, you'll see here they have all their benefits listed. Number five says UV protection, and then they have a little asterisk, and it says helps protect hair color from UV rays. So that's the type of thing that you wanna look for. Okay, that is all I wanted to cover in today's video for environmental sunlight, air related damage that happens to our hair in the summer. So now let's focus on water related damage. There are obviously a lot of different water related activities that take place in the summer, like swimming in a pool, swimming in the ocean, swimming in a lake, washing your hair after doing all of those things. But if you're a frequent viewer, then you know that I've talked at length on my channel about how water damages our hair. That's not what we're going to focus on for today's video because been there, done that. So if you are new here and you don't really know what I'm talking about, I'll list some videos below where I talk about how water damages our hair. For this video, I really want to focus on those summer specific water activities like chlorine in a swimming pool and salt in the ocean. Salt water poses risk to the integrity of our hair for many different reasons, but one of those reasons is just all of the different minerals and chemicals in the ocean that our hair can absorb when we swim in it. It's actually kind of disgusting when you think about it, like all that gunk and then everything that's actually absorbed from the atmosphere. Ew. Also, cause you know I Googled this, the pH of the ocean right now from what I was seeing on average is around 8.1. I actually found this study where they submerged hair samples in water at different pH levels. I was geeking out on this and they measured changes specifically in the color of the hair and the cuticle pattern of the hair. And while no change was observed in the hair when it was submerged in water at a pH of seven, as it relates to those specific aspects of the hair, hair that was submerged in water with a pH of nine changed color. So they didn't have, you know, the pH of the ocean at 8.1 in this study, but the ocean could absolutely contribute to hair color fade if you think about it in that way. If seven did not change the color to fade, but nine did, 8.1 is somewhere in between. Then we have chlorinated swimming pools, which to no surprise, also contain a lot of chemicals and minerals. And there's actually two transition metals that are found in chlorinated water that are also often found absorbed into the hair. And those metals are iron and copper. Copper is actually the metal that has been shown to turn blonde hair green. And one of the reasons that this is believed to be true is because bleached hair absorbs more copper than non-bleached hair. I did find a study that is exciting because in this study, they attempted to simulate copper absorption from swimming pools and they pre-treated the hair with a quaternary ammonium conditioner. Quaternary ammonium compounds are ingredients often found in conditioners that are really great for damaged hair because they actually will kind of glom on to the negative charge of damaged hair and resist being rinsed away. Why did I choose glom as the word for that? But that's why I always get excited to see quats on an ingredients list because they really do help to strengthen damaged hair. So in this situation, the quaternary ammonium conditioner inhibited green color formation of the hair in the copper swimming pool simulation, even though small amounts of copper were still found in the hair. So that conditioner didn't fully prevent the absorption of copper, but it did prevent the copper from turning the hair green, which is awesome. So obviously the very best way to avoid all of that potential damage from salt water and chlorinated water is to avoid submerging your hair in the ocean or in pools altogether whenever you're able to. So I would highly recommend putting your hair in a high bun, 
keep it away from the water whenever you're able to because the less that you submerge your hair in that water, the less of that damage you're gonna get. But again, I know that that is not always a practical recommendation. So if you do plan to dunk your head under the water and get your hair fully wet, my tip is the same tip that I give for wash days, which is to apply an oil to the lengths and ends of your hair. This is really going to help to protect your hair from the water, from all of the things floating in the water, especially if it's a coconut-based oil. Coconut oil, unlike a lot of other hair oils that kind of just sit on top of the hair and create a film, is actually able to penetrate the hair and even porosity. So it kind of helps to fill out the structural irregularities in the hair, which is going to help to prevent the absorption of all of those minerals and chemicals that we talked about. This is also a topic that I've talked a lot about before and I do have an entire video dedicated to coconut oil for our hair. So I'll list that below if you wanna know more about all the benefits that coconut oil has for our hair and some things to think about to make sure that you're not causing more harm than good if you end up using coconut oil in your hair care routine. So oil your hair before you jump in the water and based on that study, maybe apply a little bit of a conditioner on top of that that has quaternary ammonium compounds in it just to make sure you're locked and loaded. When you're done swimming, I think the best thing that you can do for your hair is to shampoo it as quickly as possible. I would avoid letting your hair sit for hours on end with chlorinated water or salt water in it, even if you applied some sort of protective pretreatment shampoo as quickly as you're able to so that you can get all of that out of your hair. But the key here is to look for a shampoo that has chelating ingredients in it. Chelators are ingredients that are specifically designed to grab on to metals and minerals found in water and aid in their removal when you're rinsing away. There's a lot of chelating ingredients that are commonly used in shampoos, so you can be on the lookout for things like tetrasodium EDTA, disodium EDTA, potassium citrate, ascorbic acid, citric acid, but at the same time, there are also other purposes for those ingredients in a shampoo formula. One example being that citric acid is commonly used as a preservative in products. So there may not be enough of that in a product if you just see it on the label, especially if it's at the very bottom. So what I would actually recommend doing instead is looking for a shampoo that claims to be detoxifying or clarifying, and then checking for the presence of those ingredients because a lot of the times, oh God, scared the actual crap out of me. A lot of the times those shampoos that do claim to be detoxifying or clarifying will have a combination of deeper cleaning cleansing agents and chelating ingredients in them. And that's why they have that label. Two of my favorite clarifying products of all time include the DP Hue ACV Hair Rinse and the Way Detox Shampoo. And both of these products contain chelating ingredients. If you're looking for an affordable option, the Kristen S Deep Clean Clarifying Shampoo is a really good one because it not only has chelating ingredients, but also sulfate which is going to be an amazing combination for removing buildup. I feel like our hair is so susceptible to buildup in the summer. You can get like sunscreen on the lengths and ends of your hair. It's super difficult to remove. So in situations like that, a shampoo like this is amazing. All right, let's wrap up this video with a few kind of miscellaneous summer hair care tips. My first tip is to take extra precautions to detangle your hair. There's so many things in the summer that can make our hair really, really tangly. I don't know about you guys, but chlorine makes my hair a literal knot. So chlorinated water, salt water, sunscreen, the sand, really windy weather, all of those things can make our hair more tangly, which make it more difficult to brush through, which then ultimately just lead to breakage. So detangle your hair before any summertime activity. And also on top of that, I would definitely recommend wearing your hair in some sort of style that makes it less likely for your hair to tangle. So a braid, a bubble ponytail, a bun, anything like that is a good option. My second tip is to not be afraid to wash your hair more if you need to. I know that might sound surprising coming from me, but between the extra sweat on your scalp from the really hot, humid days and all of the gunk that can get on our scalp and our hair from the pool and beach, you may need to shampoo more frequently to maintain the health of your scalp, keep it feeling comfortable and remove all of that gunk from your hair so that you don't end up with really snarly matted hair. And if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. And in that same vein, my last tip is to make sure that you're not neglecting your scalp health. So something that may be helpful in the summertime especially is to introduce some sort of pre-shampoo exfoliating treatment. Maybe you'll want to use clarifying shampoos more often, or you could use some sort of scalp mask before shampooing. There's a lot of different options like overnight masks, even just pure aloe vera is an amazing option for the health of your scalp. So I will list some scalp care products below. I'll list just pure aloe vera because I think that you can't go wrong with that, but 
make sure that you're not neglecting your scalp. All right, you guys, that is everything that I wanted to share for this video. So we will wrap it up here. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. Your support means the world. Drop a comment below letting me know if there's anything that you're gonna try out after watching this video. Is there something you learned that surprised you? Is there something I said that reinforced what you were thinking? Let's chat summer hair care in the comments below. If there's a product that you are interested in testing out after watching this, as always, they will be listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. And I think that's everything. So stay tuned for my next video. It will be up in a few days. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much. And until then, I hope you have a great few days.